Hello and welcome. I'm Diane Wagner. Music is something that people enjoy throughout the world. Here in the United States, we appreciate classical, jazz, pop, rock, country, and rap. Uh, in other parts of the world, we're exposed to different sounds from different instruments. So today's show, we're going to share the sounds of the Caribbean steel drums. And our guest is um, Mary Spaldi, who for the past 25 years has been teaching a Caribbean steel drums and also has developed a band where she shares the beautiful music in her band called Steel Dam. And I'm so happy to introduce to you Mary Spaulding, welcome. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Now, it was interesting because when I was researching, uh, learning about you, I understand that you are classically trained as a musician. Tell us about your background in music. Uh, that goes back quite a ways. I started playing piano, piano lessons, when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And I took piano um, all through elementary school and high school and then also started uh, taking organ lessons as well. And so by the time I, I went to get my bachelor's degree, I decided to focus on music and I went to a conservatory of music and got my bachelor's degree, uh, a Bachelor of Arts degree in music at, at Lawrence University at the Conservatory of Music in Appleton, Wisconsin. Wow. And uh, I, I majored in music education and uh, with piano and organ as my major instruments. Good, so you're classically trained. Classically trained. So then later on you went on and you got a master's in world music. What happened there? What did you? Well, I after uh, eight years teaching in the school systems, uh, elementary school, junior high, a little bit of high school as well, I decided to do some traveling. And uh -huh. I, my travels took me to Africa, uh, to on a Kenyan safari mm -hmm. and also to South Korea, parts of the Caribbean. And I was just exposed to a world of instruments that I'd, I'd never been exposed to in my classical training. Right, and we have some pictures of some of those travels that you went on. Uh -huh. So you just know, so these are drums from where are those these drums These are, are, are drums from South Korea. Uh -huh. uh, the drums on the left are Kong Do drums and the ones on the, on the on the right that we're looking at now are Nido drums from South Korea. And all these drums give us dif different sound? Uh, different sounds and uh, there are many, many different kinds of drums um, in South Korean music and instruments and mm -hmm. these are just two examples. Uh, this example is uh, an example of Caribbean steel drums on my travels to Trinidad in the West Indies, Trin the island of Trinidad in the Caribbean. And uh, this is a steel drum band. I'm actually playing in this band. I'm way in the back, uh -huh. person with a, uh, with a yeah, uh, orange bandana on. And these bands, some of these bands in Trinidad can be as large as 125 members. Are you serious? Playing steel drums. And this photo that we're looking at right now, uh, back to my South Korea travels, uh, this is a farmer's dance and uh, drum group that uh, I went to a place called Korean Folk Village uh -huh. in which they uh, did traditional historical dances and, and uh, musical instrument playing for people. So in all your travels, you seem most fascinated with the Caribbean steel drum. I fell in love with Caribbean steel drums, uh, both in my travels and then when I went back to school for my master's degree, I went to Wesleyan University mm -hmm. in Middletown, Connecticut. And I, I, uh, I majored in world music, and that's also called ethnomusicology, which is the study of music and culture from around the world. And one of the courses that, that they allowed us to take was steel drum ensemble. Really? And uh, I took that course and I just, I fell in love with the Caribbean steel drums. And that was way back in 1984 and I have been playing ever since. And I've uh, since been to Trinidad and studied and played with bands. Uh, down on the island of Trinidad as well. Now these drums have quite a history. Can you give us some, tell us some of the history of the Caribbean steel drums? Uh, the history is, is absolutely fascinating, especially when I start out telling people when they ask me this question. Uh, th the first thing I say is a Caribbean steel drum 
is fashioned and made from an empty 55 gallon oil barrel. That's amazing. And we actually have pictures of them making uh, these steel drums out of the barrels. So why were they made out of oil barrels? They were made out of oil barrels be because back way back in the 1800s, the British controlled the island of Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And the population was uh, primarily of African descent. Mm -hmm. And drumming is a very, very important um, uh, focus, musical instrument in African tradition. And so it was in, in the uh, tradition of Trinidad as well. But when the British ruled, they were afraid of people drumming mm -hmm. because they were afraid people would send uh, rhythmic coded messages oh through, really? through their drumming, uh, especially during celebrations like carnival time. So the British banned the drums. Mm -hmm. They said no more use of drums. Well, that didn't stop the people from drumming. They didn't, they didn't break the law and play drums. They just picked up other artifacts in order to beat on them and and create a rhythm because th that rhythm and percussion and the art of drumming is just was so central in that culture right. and that music. So they were going to drum no matter what. They were going to drum no they matter could. what, even if they didn't have drums. So they just started to pick up sticks and beat on sticks. They started to cut pieces of bamboo long and short. Uh -huh. And, and stomp the bamboo tubes on the ground. And then they started experimenting with metal mm -hmm. objects, just picking up metal objects and beating on me metal objects. Well, uh, as, as you can see here, you pick up a pan or a pot or a pan, uh, you beat on it after right. a while, it's, you're gonna dent it. And once you've made dents in it, then it's going to sound different than it did before you first started. Mm -hmm. So that was really the impetus of making dents in metal and, and using non-drum items just to beat a rhythm. And they started making dents in metal, heard different sounds, uh -huh. almost heard what they, what they thought were you know, almost pitches. And they started experimenting with metal objects until uh, they finally started uh, experimenting with 55 gallon oil barrels because uh, oil refining is is a big industry on the island of Trinidad mm -hmm. up until and during World War II the US had a naval base there so empty 55 gallon oil barrels were in ready and abundant supply for people to experiment and use these discarded materials. So each dent actually has a different sound? Uh, it all the, the process of denting uh, the steel drum will give you different sounds. And in fact, they will fashion notes and, and bigger notes uh, will give lower sounds and they'll, they'll dent up the drum so that they're smaller notes and smaller notes will give higher sounds. So they actually, from, from empty oil barrels, made a pitched melodic instrument that it's still a rhythm instrument that you're playing rhythms on, mm -hmm. but it's also a melodic instrument that you can play beautiful melodies on as well. Okay, well, I can't wait any longer. I want to hear some of this, these beautiful melodies with these oil drums. <laughs> Basically, oil drums. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. so the first song you're gonna you're gonna play for us is party time. Party time, uh, <laughs> and this is this is a piece of music. It's a traditional genre of of music in Trinidad. It's called a soca, and soca is like a calypso, which is kind of juiced up so okay. that it has a fast tempo and it gets you in the mood for party time. And that's the name of this soca. It's called party time soca. Good. You we might have to start to dance. We might have to party. Okay. Here we go.
great time. Thank you Good very job, much. Mary. It does make you, uh, you know, it's different. I, I heard it on a CD, but then to hear you playing it live, that's exciting. Super. Yeah. Super. So Made you feel like you wanted to party. Oh, yeah. I wanted to party. I wanted to get up and dance. So when you came back to the States, you started your band, Steel, Steel Jam. I started a band, Steel Jam, when in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, of all places. So how was that perceived? Uh, well, when I started playing in Wisconsin and had my steel drum band in Wisconsin, it was a most wonderful experience because we, back in uh, the late 80s, we were the only Caribbean steel drum band uh -huh. in the state. In the state. So we were, we were very well received and, and people truly had, many had never seen nor heard except if they had gone on cruises. Uh, they had never seen nor heard this instrument at all, so we were very, very well received. Okay, and what type of events? We actually have some pictures of different events that you've played at, so tell us what type of venues you usually do play. Well, uh, since moving uh, here in 93 to the Bay Area, I, I continued on with Steel Jam. My band has one to five members, and, and we play for corporate events, we play uh, background music, dance music, uh, for corporate picnics. Here you're uh, at the Oakland Zoo. Here we are at the Oakland Zoo, and we're, we're playing for their annual ben benefit, um, the Walk in the Wild uh, fundraiser that they have every year. And uh, we also do private parties and uh, street festivals, community festivals, you name it. Wherever people want to have a good time, uh, Steel Jam will be there. Good. Now, besides the band playing, you also have two different school assembly programs. Uh, the first one is Instruments Around the World, and then you also have Nature Awareness with Recycled Instruments. Would you tell us about these programs? Well, this, this is another hat that I wear, that I uh, am a solo school assembly program uh, performer. Uh -huh. And uh, one offerings that offering that the schools can choose is a 45-minute program of instruments from around the world, mm -hmm. and and that's exactly what it is. I bring instruments from Africa, from uh, uh, South America, Trinidad, the Caribbean, etc., and and I expose children to instruments they have never before seen or heard. Mm -hmm. And the other program that I offer, uh, besides music as a passion, I, I am also uh, a nature lover. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an avid bird watcher and uh, I love the outdoors and, and learning about nature. And I fashioned a program to teach environmental education to children. And uh, uh, I sing songs about nature like the bat echolocation song the decomposer wrap, and uh, the let's recycle rag, and I round out the program by showing students another way to recycle, not just put it in the recycling bin, mm -hmm. but to save and reuse an item and recycle it into a musical instrument they can play. And these are some of these instruments, so tell us about this. These look like they're smashed. Uh, Coke, co 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 smash bottle caps. Bottle caps on bottle wood caps. with nails. On a piece of scrap wood. It's a tambourine sound, very easy. And what is this, an old uh, it's, it's box? A, it's a box. Take any box, recycle the box, uh -huh. take a, the lid off, cut some V-grooves on the sides and rubber bands, and you've got a rubber band harp. Oh, and this, if you sew, you have a... a, a what do you call it? It's the, the spool. The, the spool. From the thread, you can make, you can fashion a drum beater. Okay. And uh, make a drum out of a, a piece of rubber, a plastic ice cream bucket. This one what the kids this? absolutely love. It's a scrap wood xylophone. Oh, cool. Oh, is it fascinating how each one has a different sound? That's cool. And uh, I had some extra flower pots, so I, I put those to use instead of throwing those away. I, I reused them and, and just fashioned them into a flower pot chime, which... Cool. And then these are old PVC pipes? PVC pipes 
uh, what do you do with this? Old tubes, and you know, like when you when you blow into a pop bottle, you can get a sound because it's a closed tube. Mm -hmm. uh, take any kind of tube and plug it up in the bottom with with some clay or I don't know, save your old gum, <laughs> Diane. You know, <laughs> just plug it up, plug it up, recycle the old gum, uh, blow across like a pop bottle. <laughs> My goodness. Christmas time, so. <laughs> Make yourself. Amazing. Make yourself some pan flutes. And what do you have over here? You have some interesting things. I've got some, uh, a bleach bottle can be fashioned and recycled into like a bleach bottle banjo. Get some fishing line and some nails and screw eyes and wow. One last one, and the kids will. The, the kids are, are fascinated by this. That just from an old tube, yeah. one old tube, they could make a trumpet-like instrument. But uh, in order to blow a trumpet, I did have a friend recycle an old mouthpiece that he never used anymore. So put the mouthpiece in there like that. But it doesn't look like a trumpet. Right. So oh, oh oh, this is what I recycled from the garage. Just an old funnel, like so. That is an old put funnel. Put that in there and get your lips ready, pucker up, and watch out in the studio. Here we go. Here's my recycled trumpet. I call it my landfill longhorn. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. I just love it. Now, I want to play, so you have to teach me how to play these Caribbean steel drums. This is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've all already heard uh, the highest sounding steel drum, which yeah. is called a lead or a tenor steel drum. It, it's like the soprano sound in a choir. But steel drums have many, 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 many uh, different ranges. This is the highest sounding range. Uh -huh. And there's like a soprano in the choir. There's also uh, like a medium range. Um, and I'm, I haven't brought all the different kind of drums with me. The, the studio practically isn't, isn't large enough. But well, and that's what's amazing too, because there's many different types of these drums. It's not just one or two. Correct. There's like how many? There, there are probably about six or seven different ranges six from or high seven different to ranges. low. Okay. And I say six or seven because the experimentation continues, and mm -hmm. they're coming up with new steel drum designs all the time. Now, this this set, one person plays a set of two. It's called a double second steel drum, and okay. it's, it's like the alto sound in a choir. If the lead drum is a soprano sound, this is a lower pitched instrument. The notes are bigger, and the notes sound lower. And, okay. and you can kind of hear a difference that they're a oh little yes. bit lower. Now, I brought one other set from high to a medium range, and every band needs a bass. Mm -hmm. Every band, whether you're a rock band, you've got a bass guitar, your orchestra has a string bass, steel drum bands have a bass drum set. I brought two bass steel drums, okay. and this is from a, a total set of mine of five. And one person puts themselves in the middle of five bass drums and plays and is responsible for all five drums. Oh my it goodness. It can go up to eight or nine mm -hmm. bass drums in a set, but I've only brought two for show. And the bass drum sounds very low. Okay. Okay, two hands. We're not using these, right? Right. Okay. And I'm going to teach you just as though you went to Trinidad. Okay. When you were learning in Trinidad and you were going to, to learn to play in, in, the, in one of the bands, you wouldn't learn by reading music and seeing, oh, there's the score, there's middle C, I have to play middle C, quarter note, etc. You would walk up to someone like you're doing with me, you would watch, you okay. would observe and listen and then I'll play a little bit for you and I'll pass the sticks to you. Okay, let's play quick before we run out of time. A, B, D, A, A, B. So you will go A, A, B, back to the A, switch to the E. 
Okay. Now, left hand on A. A, A, B, C, A, switch to the A. A, A, C, switch. A, A, D, D, A, A, E, E. Do it one more time, Diane. Keep it going. I like it. So now you also do corporate events too. Tell us about some of those corporate events that you do. Team building exercises. We we actually uh, we actually utilize steel drum in corporate team building. Yeah. We have a program called Band Together Through Steel Drumming. Okay. And we bring the steel drums and we have people play the steel drums much much like you just did. Right. Uh, you had no previous experience. We give you a little guidance and we kind of fashion people who have never done this before. They work as a team and before you know it, they're playing a song together and working together. Wow. See, that's exciting. That's what's nice. So what do you feel is really unique about the steel drum? Uh, it's unique. I, I think two things are unique. One, it's for some reason that, that I, I cannot you know, write down exactly into words, but when you, the sound of the steel drum puts a smile. It does. On people's face. It really and, does. Uh, countless people come up to me, come up to the band, and just say, that music just makes me smile. It does, and, it does. And, and the other thing that's fascinating and inspirational about the instrument, the concept of just taking equipment that just starts off discarded and making it into a beautiful sounding instrument. Yes. That's creativity, that's ingenuity. That's exciting. Now, one thing that I found really interesting about the repertoire that you have on your um, website is you also play classical music with the steel drums. Could you play a quick little snippet of the Nutcracker Ballet for us? Okay. I used to dance professionally with Oakland Ballet and the Nutcracker is one of my favorite songs and so, I just have to hear a classical song with the steel drums. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. So in your journey of music, how do you feel the Caribbean steel drums have changed your life? Uh, steel, Caribbean steel drums have changed my life because it, to me, uh, like I said before, it's just the epitome of creativity. Mm -hmm. Creativity and taking something, taking something discarded and making it into, some, into something beautiful. Yeah, and for me, looking at all this and learning about everything, you know, it's the simple things in life, and I love seeing all these recycled products because I, as a child, banged on my mom's pots and pans, and my nieces and nephews do the same thing. And to me, I think this is the beauty of uh, these steel drums here. So with that, 
you know, if people want to know more about the steel drums, they could log on to your website, and that's at www.steeljam.com. Mm -hmm. And I just want to end the show with one last positive thought or affirmation that you have within you that has inspired you to teach and dedicate a large portion of your life to sharing the Caribbean steel drum with others. Uh, the positive thought is embrace creativity, embrace doing things you've never done before, embrace music and the arts in your life. Well, that you definitely have done. You're quite an inspiration, I've got <laughs> well, to tell you. you. I have been inspired by all this. I want to go home and make some, some uh, instruments out of what I have at home for my nieces and my nephews. So with that, my wish to everyone is simply just to stay in action and keep the faith and go home and make your own creative instrument. Uh, it's a fun thing to do with your family and your friends. Uh, if you want more information about our show, you could log on to our website at www.dianewagner.com. Thanks so much for watching. And we're going to end with one last song. And what is it? And it's very fitting. It's called Jamaica Farewell. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.